Hello students, today I am going to discuss on the topic Neolithic cultures of Europe, early and late. Now let me introduce about this topic. In Europe, the Neolithic period is characterized by the domestication of plants and animals, which led the people to a subtle village life. Thus, the people of this period gave up the nomadic habits, as well as the hunting, fishing, and gathering way of life. During this period itself, some group of people introduced wheel and it brought many changes in their economy, which again led to the formation of early farming communities, that is, from food gathering to food producing economy. In this model, an attempt has been made to understand the students about the early and late Nordic cultures of Europe based on the information from diverse sources. The Neolithic cultures of Europe emerges with the beginning of early farming. This culture continues up to the early part of Bronze Age through the Copper Age. In contrast to it, the appearance of pottery and polished stone tools are considered as the criteria for Neolithic culture in the regions like East Baltic, Belarus, and Russia. In some parts of Europe, the Neolithic culture flourished along with Copper Age, but their beginning and ends vary across the continent. So we can see different cultural traits in different areas of Europe, and hence there is no uniformity in the development of Neolithic culture in the entire Europe. For instance, the incipient farming communities appeared in the Asian area and Greece around 7000 BC, while the earliest agriculture in the northwestern part of Europe, essentially in Britain and Scandinavia, did not arrive until after 4000 BC. By the time, early Neolithic farming was established in Central Europe. The Copper Age had already begun in Southeastern Europe. Early Neolithic trade and settlement in Central Europe was going on at a time when hunting and gathering societies were still flourishing in Scandinavia. and the East Baltic area. These different periods are not separated from one another by any sharp bricks. The changes occurring in the various aspects of different cultures have been gradual. The broad divisions of the Neolithic and Copper Age culture of Europe are number one early Neolithic, that is, it ranges from 7000 BC up to 5500 or 5000 BC. Number 2. The Middle Neolithic or Early Copper Age, it ranges from 5500 or 5000 up to 3500 BC. And lastly, Late Neolithic or Late Copper Age. It ranges from 3500 up to 2200 or 2000 BC. Here, 
our main concern is about early and late Neolithic cultures of Europe only. The next point is concept of Neolithic in European context. The concept and meaning of the term Neolithic in European context has seen substantially since the time it was employed. It has been used as time period, a cultural phase, an evolutionary step, an economy or mode of production, a population, a social structure, and other variable cultural phenomena. Besides, other information is also employed to identify the Neolithic. In Britain, radiocarbon dates of a certain age are often the criteria used for Neolithic, in spite of the fact that there is a great deal of overlap in the dates of for the late Mesolithic and early Neolithic. In Scandinavia and other areas, the presence of distinctive pottery or Polish flints is frequently taken as the hallmark of the first farmers. However, one may argue that the plant and animal remains of domesticated species are the most reliable indication of cultivation and herding. The introduction of agriculture onto Europe reflect the spread of agricultural communities bearing ceramic containers and domesticated plants and animals. Permanent villages, new architecture, storage facilities, long distance trade, and elaborate rituals. A general understanding of the emergence and spread of Neolithic culture in Europe suggests several directional movements of people. However, these views are also criticized and revised from time to time. The transition to agriculture in Europe has been subject to instance debate for over a century. With the major controversy centering on the extent to which it involved, the acculturation of indigenous Mesolithic hunter-gatherers population or the replacement of hunter-gatherers by farmers, that is Neolithic people, dispersing from the Near East. These contrasting demographic models are often referred to as cultural diffusion and dynamic diffusion models, respectively. Now let's come to the next point that is debate on the emergence of Neolithic agricultural communities in the Eastern Mediterranean region. There are two views on the presence of agricultural communities in the Eastern Mediterranean region. The first point is the earliest farmers in Europe immersed in the Aegean and Greece by the beginning of the 7th millennium BC. These settlements were located on perennially wet flood plains with very fertile soils. The earliest Neolithic settlements on mainland Greece were villages and the inhabitants are thought to have arrived as colonies from the Near East. Number two. There are views on the indigenous development in mainland Greece rather than colonization. Early Neolithic is not understood in this region. The evidence that comes from the site of Frantic Cave 
India Peloponnese shows that local foragers have gradually adopted cultigens and herd animals as a part of the transition to agriculture. Thus, current views on the transition to agriculture in the Asian and Greece are different. Recently, the studies on ancient DNA studies suggest that demographic transition was not uniform across Europe, but rather represent a mosaic of population replacement, admixture and adoption of farming practices by indigenous populations. Now let us discuss on the beginning of ceramic tradition in Europe. Europe was the last geographic region of the old world where the production of pottery emerged. Situated at a relatively same distance from two early centers of ceramic origin, the first being the Near East, in the area including the Tigris Euphrates Basin. Anatolia and the second North Africa. 7th millennium BC, Europe was the theater of complex socio-political processes that included the spread of ceramics, which in the next millennia would reach the northwestern limits of the continent. Now let us discuss on early Neolithic of Europe. In Greece and Bulgaria, the earliest farming groups appeared between 7000 and 6500 BC. Archaeologists reconstructed the chains occur with the appearance of Neolithic societies, such as chains from Mesolithic hunting, fishing, gathering live waste to sedentary Neolithic agriculture, change in skill or occupations, social organization, settlement pattern, population, landscape, diet, rituals, values and beliefs. Ian Hodder pointed out the importance of the ideologies and new ideas that we are part of the Neolithic transition as a profound social, ideological, and conceptual scenes. There are considerable cultural homogeneity among early Neolithic farming societies, especially in Central Europe. A large part of the European continent was occupied by farmers between 7000 and 5000 BC. Different processes operated in the transition to farming in various regions of Europe in which local foragers appear to have played an important role. There was no northward expansion of farming for approximately 1000 years after the initial expansion over Central Europe. The earliest evidence for agriculture in Greece comes from Frantike, Peloponnese, around 6000 BC. Evidences of domesticated animals and plants like emmer and corn wheat appear in the archaeological record at the Cape. Other archaeological records in Greece shows that local people were taking up agriculture very soon after its introduction into Europe, and farming seems to have spread ways from Greece through the Mediterranean basin. Farming was probably introduced into the Balkans by immigrants from Anatolia who brought domesticated cereal crops such as emma and corn with them, as well as sheep and goats. 
the early neolithic settlements are in the form of compact villages the dwellings are one room units built of bad mud plaster on poles and wicker the next point is on danubian culture b goronsail coined the term danubian culture to describe the first neolithic society in central and eastern europe it covers the linear pottery culture which appears to have spread westward along the valley of the danube river and interacted with the cultures of atlantic europe the danubian one people made linear pottery and domesticated cows pigs dogs sheep and goats the sula cell is the diagnostic tool of the sculpture these people live in long houses Now let's come to the next point linear band ceramic also known as LBK or linear pottery culture This is a major tradition of European Neolithic flourishing at around 5500 to 4500 BC It is commonly known as LBK the term is originated from the German word linear band ceramic it is also known as linear band ware lbw linear ware linear ceramic or incised ware culture the most concentration of this culture is seen on the middle dani the upper and middle elbe the upper and middle rhine by 5300 bc linear pottery culture is found as far west as the shen valley and the netherlands This culture represents a major event in the initial spread of agriculture in Europe. The pottery of this culture consists of simple cups, bowls, basins, and jugs without handles. but in later phases with lux or pyre lux bases and necks they are found in slovakia zak republic germany Austria and Hungary One of the richest settlement sites in Central Europe was excavated at Oslonki in Poland It was dated to 4300 BC The large fortified settlement area covers an area of 4000 square meter nearly 30 trapezoidal long houses and over 80 graves are found at a site these houses were built of massive timber posts clink with wattle and dog mortar the early farmers who made linear pottery live in small clusters of timber long houses in contrast to southern europe 
Here, the people keep cattle as domesticated animals. In Central Europe, the linear pottery people separated their dishes from their settlements. A separate place for the internment of their ancestors was made. They treated the date differently according to their gender. Now let's move to the Linear Pottery Settlement Complex at Bailani. The Linear Pottery Settlement Complex at Bailani of Czech Republic has been the focus of archaeological research since 1953. The site has proved to be one of the most important early farming sites in Central Europe. The settlement is spread out over a lowish covered landscape on both sides of a small stream and dated to 5400 up to 5000 BC. Excavations have revealed dozens of superimposed longhouse outlines and storage pits based on changes in pottery styles and the overlapping of houses and pits five major occupation pages have been proposed. Now let's come to the Lingyal culture. This is a Neolithic culture on the Middle Danube in Central Europe. It is named after the type site of Lingyal in Hungary and dated to 4000 up to 3000 BC. It was a successor to the linear pottery culture. Lingyan pottery was found in Western Hungary, the Czech and Slovak republics, Austria and Poland. Here both small houses and long houses are found as constant part of the settlements. Some settlements were open, whereas some are surrounded by defensive ditches. The Ete Bole culture dated to 5300 BC up to 3950 BC. This culture was roughly contemporaneous with the linear pottery culture. The people were hunter-gatherer and fisher group, having pottery making tradition. This culture is named after the type site of Ertebole in Lim Jordan in Danish Zutle. The Ertebole people did not practice agriculture but they utilize domestic grains in some capacity. This culture began to expand along the Baltic coast after 4100 BC, as far as Rugen. Thereafter, it was replaced by the Funnel Beaker culture. Impress where pottery appears at some places in Italy and southern France that had long been visited by forager groups. Early farming sites differ little from forager settlements. It suggests that crops and livestock were passed along from group to group and adopted into the hunter-gatherer economy. The star over site near Belgrade has yielded earliest Neolithic settlement in the Balkans. These early Neolithic sites are usually referred to as Karanovo culture, which is named after the Bulgarian village of Karanovo. These village clusters continued to flourish until the arrival of metal. The Neolithic people living along the Black Sea coast had to move inland, perhaps initiating population movements. 
In the late Neolithic at around 3000 to 2200 BC, some farming communities in southern Iberia fortified their settlements with concentric dry stone walls and built outlying bastions, probably to protect their irrigated fields and crops. They buried their dead in megalithic communal graves with a raised grab boots. Investigations of the world site at Los Millares of southeastern Spain and Zambuzal of Portugal have yielded evidence of crop specialization, including pottery and copper working. Now let us discuss on the Neolithic village at Skara Bri. It is a village of stone-built houses situated on the north coast of Mainland, one of the Orkney Islands of the northeast coast of Scotland. The site was excavated by V. Gordon Sai in the 1920s and dated between 3100 and 2500 BC. From the excavated materials, it is revealed that the houses boosted built in stone furniture including beds, dressers, wall cupboards and limpet tanks. The day domesticated sheep and cattle. Besides, there are a number of bones including zoo bones of hell and other marine animals have been recovered. These findings support the idea of hunting hell and other marine animals. Now let us discuss on the Panel Beaker culture of Northern Europe. This culture has been identified from the unusual shape of their characteristic vessels, which often have clear rims. This culture covers an extensive area which ranges from southern Norway to the Czech Republic or Austrian border. and from the Netherlands to the Ukraine. The most important characteristic feature of these ancient peoples is that they were among the first to use milk and milk products. This culture is also known as TRB culture, an abbreviated form of its original German term. Victor Becker culture and dated to 4000 BC up to 2700 BC. It is the principal North Central European megalithic culture of late Neolithic Europe. Now let's come to the next topic or G the Iceman. It was discovered in 1991 and also known as Similuan Man. Housley Bob Main or Frozen Fritz. It was found eroding out of a glacier in the Italian Alps near the border between Italy and Austria. The human remains are of a late Neolithic or Galpolithic man who had died between about 3350 to 3300 BC. Now let's move to megaliths. 
This culture is known from Italy, Spain, France, Britain, Scandinavia, Britain and Ireland. They started around 4000 BC and continue to survive in some parts till as late as 2000 BC. This culture is characterized by large communal tombs of stone with buried chambers and large stones erected as memorial. Pottery with distinctive scale of incised decoration referred to cell in press pottery characterizes this culture. Growing of cereal crops and grazing of livestock seem to have been their principal economic pursuits. Now let me come to its conclusion. Neolithic culture of Europe started with the emergence of early farming and continues up to the early part of Bronze Age through Copper Age. In other regions of Europe like the East Baltic, Belarus and Russia, the emergence of pottery and Polish stone tools are considered as a criteria for the beginning of Neolithic culture. The Neolithic culture of Europe has three broad divisions, namely Early Neolithic, Middle Neolithic and Late Neolithic. In this module, we have discussed on Early and Late Neolithic. Early Neolithic period appeared between 7000 to 6500 BC. During this period, many changes occurred, particularly in the occupation, social organization, settlement pattern, population landscape, diet, rituals, values, and religious beliefs. It brought a considerable cultural homogeneity. In the late Neolithic period, at around 3000 to 2200 BC, some farming communities fortified their settlements with concentric dry stone walls and built outlying bastions. They buried their dead in megalithic communal grave with grab goods. In some areas, there were evidences of craft specialization, including pottery and copper working. The most important characteristic feature of the funnel beaker culture of late Neolithic is that the people were among the first to use milk and milk products. Thank you all for present hearing.